Dumb money. This week's question comes from Jonathan Williams. I've saved up $100,000 during the student loan freeze, but haven't moved out of my parents' basement, but want to, or paid on my $180,000 of grad school debt. How should I prioritize spending the money? He also continues to go on and specify that the student loans that were for grad school are high interest student loan debt. I will give my opinion on this very shortly, but this is dumb money after all, so we need to see what the average person thinks. And as we head into that, make sure you subscribe to this. I'm really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers, and we're so freaking close. With that out of the way, this is dumb money. With 100,000? Oh, you got to pay off your debt first. So he's going to put all 100 towards 180,000? Then you'd only have 80,000 left to pay off. So I think in order to do other things with your life, you got to get rid of the interest. So he should fully prioritize that student loan debt instead of moving out or anything like that? Uh, I would say yeah. Um, if you want to do half and half, maybe that would be a good compromise. He should buy his own place and start investing like in his future rather than when you can pay off your debt in time. Even with the debt being pretty high interest, he should focus more on getting his own place? I would say yeah. It's m more of an investment to a lifelong commitment. And then with whatever extra money, rather than buying his own place, like, of course, put that towards his, his debt. And what do you think? I just graduated high school only, so that was a better question for her than me. <laughs> <laughs> she got more school yeah, debts than me. Sure. Any advice? Any advice for this guy out there when it just comes to money in general like that? I think she hit it. That's what I would go with, honestly. Investing into the future. Yeah, get out of the get out of the basement. Purchase a home. Down Purchase a home. home. Down payment, but he shouldn't focus on the high interest student loan debt. He should focus on the living situation first. Mm, that's hard. I feel like uh, real estate, you can never go wrong. But um, the high student loan, maybe the interest rate would go down. So you just make your payments on it. I mean, if he was in Austin, I'd say buy a house. But at the same time, I don't know, if it was me, I'd probably like pay a little bit from that hundred grand on the thing and then, you know, like maybe half. And then for the rest of it, try to get a good home out here. It's, 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 it's tough out here. <laughs> so focus on the living situation and tackle a little bit of the debt as well on the yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way, you know, you don't have debt collectors hounding you. Right. Yeah, he agrees. Pay off his debt. And then save up. Yeah. Pay Sorry. Off what you owe. Pay what you owe. Pay off what you owe. Pay off what you and owe. And then save again and get out That's of mom's basement. Everybody wants a freebie. Everybody wants a freebie. That's it. No freebies. Sorry. You went to school. We're retired you could have been a bricklayer. Uh, Tough. We you lived off of nothing. We lived off of nothing. We had four kids. Paycheck, never paycheck used. Never used food stamps. We just nope. did without. May do. Paid off our debts. got a handout. We raised four kids, nobody got a handout, did the military for 20 years. Yep. You live in this country, you love this country, then you pay what you owe. Pay 100 grand right up front and then pay the other 80 as soon as you can. And probably stay with the mom uh, in the basement until that's all paid off? I don't care what they do, that's their life, but pay off what they owe. That's yeah, absolutely. That's how we raised our boys too. Goes viral. Yeah. Definitely invest at least half of that to be Boone to start to make Hey, some Boone. Um, and Ooh. I would say travel to figure out their passion and what they want to do to make more money. <laughs> so what would you do about the student loans? Um, pay some of it, but I would start paying it over time, not, not all at once. So like minimum monthly payments and then investing the rest? Yeah. And how much would you put towards that travel and all the stuff that you mentioned? Like 10 to 15. Probably get out of his mom's basement and um, get a, an apartment or a house that he likes with some friends and put some in savings, invest a little bit, and maybe travel. What about the student loans? F them. Those student loans. No, I don't know about, I don't know, I don't care. Like, we're gonna be in debt until the day we die anyway, so I don't really know if it's that important to like prioritize paying those off right now because you know you can pay for them your whole life okay yeah some some takes for sure i don't know if i um 
agree with just not paying the student loans. I mean, at some point, wages might be garnished, might destroy your credit. Things that I would rather not happen to me, you know, if I was thinking about my money. And also some very aggressive people who decided not to wear shirts uh, for some reason. Getting that winter tan. Definitely an emotional argument from their own lives and how they've lived their life, which is, you know, fine. And I could say that for the last person as well who doesn't think that student debt should be paid on. But without going into the emotional side of things, how would I answer this question from a mathematical perspective? Jonathan Williams. Oh, John. Johnny boy, John, John. That's a lot of debt you got. I'm really curious what this degree was in. I'm really curious what the return on investment is going to be or what it is so far. Uh, Well, that's so much freaking money, dude. But obviously you do pretty well because you saved up $100,000. That's a lot of money, especially for the average American. That's an incredible amount of money to save up. Are you kidding me? It's awesome. And it helps because obviously you live in your parents' basement. I'm curious your age as well. Uh, getting out of grad school, living in your parents' basement, you could be early 20s, mid 20s. But even with grad school, who knows? People go back. You could be in your late 20s. You could be in your early 30s. Who, who the heck knows? Our culture is very about getting the heck out of the parents' house, like effective immediately when you turn 18. I personally don't care. It depends on the relationship with the parents and making sure that you're not being enabled and that you're not learning things that are valuable in life that need to be learned to make it on your own. But staying at home is not inherently bad as long as you are learning those things through good parenting and that you have a good relationship with your parents. We can see this in other cultures. People aren't just completely broken individuals when they move out just because they stayed with their parents much longer than they do in the United States. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a cultural thing for sure, but. Uh, I don't have any issues with it, especially if you were cash flow in school. Well, you weren't cash flow in school, obviously. That's a lot of freaking debt. So maybe that's what I would have tried to do because high interest student loan debt, high interest, $180,000 of high interest grand school debt. You should have been trying to cash flow that as much as you can. You saved up $100,000. Then again, the $100,000, I mean, I wouldn't have put it in things like an index fund or a mutual fund at that time if, you know, maybe we're going we're gonna, to we'd be putting it towards student loan debt, but putting it in a high yield savings, the majority of that time it wasn't doing anything with interest rates low, but of course now, you know, 3 4%, that's better than paying off the student loans early when they were stuck at 0%, not having to make payments while you were in grad school. So technically, you could have made a little money on it and then put all that money towards the student loan debt when you get out of it. But we are where we are right now. If I were in your shoes, and this is not official financial advice, this is only what I would be doing if I was over there in your shoes, Johnny boy. I would probably, even though, yes, I get wanting to move out and having your own place and wanting to kind of start that independent life, I'd probably stay at home for another year, year and a half. Two years, whatever it takes to pay this off. This is bad debt. Student loans are not inherently bad debt. You can have a good return on investment, but that depends on the interest rate. Your interest rate, though I don't have an exact one, you say is high. That's not good. You got to get rid of that. Since you're at home, you probably don't have too many monthly obligations like rent or anything, so you don't need to have a crazy extensive emergency fund right now as you're trying to get out of the debt. The classic Dave Ramsey approach might be perfect for you in this situation, honestly. Put a thousand, two thousand, three thousand on the side and put the other ninety-nine, ninety-eight, and ninety-seven K right at that hundred and eighty thousand dollars. And then through this next year, year and a half, two years, you are saving every single penny you have, not having a single ounce of fun and paying this off early. And you're doing that because you are going to move out eventually, hopefully in a year, year and a half, two years. And you're going to have an incredible independent life without these terrible high interest student loans. Your future is going to be incredible with what I think this income could be since you saved up $100,000 in grad school. The potential of that money is going to be insane when you do not have high interest debt to pay on. And of course, we are missing the best years of our life, best decade of our life for compound growth when it comes to retirement. 
But at this point, with the interest rates that are likely on here versus the return you'd be getting and the risk levels that are attached to having such high interest debt on so much money, it makes much more sense to just pay this off now and then aggressively invest to catch up once you move out. And of course, you will want to build up another $10,000, $20,000 emergency fund after you pay this all off before you move out. But that's what I would do, Mr. John. It's not the answer that most people would like because, again, you said you want to move out and I get wanting to move out. But this is the temporary sacrifice that we make in order to have a much better life in the future. And I promise the remaining decades of your life is nothing compared to the extra year, year and a half, two years that are staying there to sacrifice. If you want me to answer a question like this and present it to the average person, email castingcalebhammer at gmail.com with a one to two sentence question with dumb money in the subject line. Check out all the fun things in the description, including my Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. Dumb money.